people knew her by her will to make it whatever she put her mind to. Late night hours up the hill, serving coffee to strangers, talking about revenue. She kept dreaming. Hello, and welcome back. It's day two of the Easter vlogs. I had so much fun editing last night and uploading. The first day always feels a bit like, oh my goodness, this is a lot, how am I gonna do this every day? But it quickly becomes second nature. <laughs> so it's 11 o'clock, it's Thursday morning, and I have been a busy, busy bee. Dropped the kids off at my mum's this morning for the day, and then I went and did my like Easter food shop. My goodness, it was busy in there. But I got everything I needed, apart from the things I forgot. <laughs> but the things I forgot, I can get from the local shop. Yeah, I mainly just needed stuff for our Easter party tomorrow. Like, I'm not going mad with it. It's in the middle of the afternoon, so it's not like I have to give people a meal. But my mum's bringing hot cross buns. I'm going to do scones as well. And just some, like, savoury, nibbly bits, like hummus and olives and cheese and meats and stuff. Just so it's not all, like sugar <laughs> so yeah it's just going to be a really nice family afternoon all of my family are coming um my husband's parents are coming which is really nice because we don't often get to see them and yeah i'm looking forward to it i bought some beautiful spring flowers i don't really do like easter decor like i'll decorate for i'll decorate for christmas but that's because it's like a, for me, that's like a month long thing. But for Easter, I just, I'm just not that bothered about buying things with bunnies on it and putting them in my home. <laughs> and I'm the same with autumn, even though I love autumn, I'm not like a decorate for autumn kind of person. I'm not a Halloween person. So I prefer to kind of just go natural. So daffodils and tulips, just some nice, beautiful British flowers. And then in autumn, it's pumpkins, which I'll then eat. So everything is like, nothing's going in the bin basically um and that's what happens with that stuff really isn't it like our christmas decorations are already thought through and we've used them year upon year upon year and i've tried to be quite minimal with what i buy for christmas um and just like use it a lot so anyway that was a funny little tangent wasn't it yeah so i bought some spring flowers got all food and everything got mr penrose an easter egg and I got myself an Easter egg because no one else is going to buy me an Easter egg. <laughs> and um, yeah, a few more little bits for the kids. And I, I found these, which I thought were really, really cool. It's obviously a bit late now. I don't know about you, but for me, Easter in my childhood, like little fluffy chicks, little plastic feet and little fluffy guys. And they'd, they would use them to decorate things and they'd just be, they were just an Easter thing. But they're just little balls of plastic that go in the bin, right? And then I saw these, which are the same kind of thing, but they're made of paper. These are from Sainsbury's. So these can go in the recycling, although they've got little, got little plastic eyes, so I might have to snip those off. That will be a morbid day. <laughs> um, yeah, aren't these lovely? So I've got a couple of packs of these, and I'm gonna like hide these around the house, but in plain sight so that all the kids can kind of do like an Easter egg hunt, but it's not like chocolate eggs and stuff because that we're we'll, we'll doing that on Sunday. So yeah, I'm gonna have fun and I'll probably get the kids to help. Well, no, because they're gonna wanna find them. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun hiding like 20 tiny little chicks around the house tomorrow, but that's just the kind of thing that the kids love. My nephews range from six or nearly six to nearly 13. So there's quite an age range there, but they all love it. So there'll be a crafty table and food and yeah, looking forward to it. I need to make a playlist. I like, I like vintage music for parties, you know, like, like 30s, 40s, 50s kind of thing. I always go vintage Christmas for party, for Christmas parties. Anyway, you might be able to hear that. The builders are back, well, builder, singular. I had come back today to do some more work on the drive. Didn't know that was happening. So that was fun this morning when I had to move the car off the drive in my pajamas. But it's good. It means there's some work going on. It does mean it's a little bit noisy. My main task for today is to tidy the house. You can tell that the whole family was home all day yesterday. And obviously I want the house to be nice for tomorrow. 
I'm not gonna, I'm not like a, my house needs to be perfect person anymore, but I do like it to be tidy and clean. So I'm gonna keep things like the final kitchen clean and the bathroom clean till tomorrow because I like them to be as fresh as possible when people are coming around, especially the bathroom. Like, there's nothing more comforting when you go into someone's house and you go to the toilet and you can smell that it's recently been cleaned. Is that just me? Like, it's like the last thing I do, like minutes before people come around, like clean the toilet. <laughs> I like to put a candle on and some flowers and make it all like nice. Um, and obviously the kids are gonna be here again later, so there's gonna be more things to tidy, but it's gotten to that point, like it normally does at this point in the week, where there's just clutter, and I need to go around and do the big declutter. The weekly declutter is honestly one of the best routines I've ever like established. Because it doesn't even feel like cleaning and tidying, it's just it's just the declutter. Everything gets put away and it's life changing. It's been amazing. So I'm gonna do that today and just kind of get the house as close to okay as possible. And I would love to go for a run, but the weather is currently looking gross. Like this morning it was like, yay, blue skies, we're gonna go for a nice run. And now it's like windy AF and grey, and I can see that it's gonna rain. So I might have to Oh, the kids are going to be back at half three. So I'm going to need to time it well. Right, let's look at the weather. What's it saying? It's basically saying it's going to rain all afternoon. Bum, what a shame. I could go first thing tomorrow morning when Mr Penrose is here. It's not going to rain tomorrow. I don't mind a little bit of rain when I'm running. Like, it doesn't bother me that much as long as I've got long sleeves on. And I always run with like a cap, to, like to protect my face and my skin from like the sun and also kind of give me a little bit of privacy. <laughs> so yeah, rain forecast in the next hour. And then it drops to 50% at one o'clock. Okay, so we're gonna do the big house clean and tidy first. And then if the weather's nice, we will run. If it is not, we will knit. <laughs> I, um, I've only recently started running again. And uh, like my relationship with running has been very up and down throughout my life. And in the most recent history, it, it was very, very disordered and not great. It was actually really bad. <laughs> And since that part of my life, I've been trying here and there to get back into running because before the bad times, running was like, I loved it. I loved it so much. It wasn't disordered. I wasn't doing it to try and change my body. It, it was a hobby. And I've recently been discussing this in depth with my therapist. <laughs> I've been like saying, like, I want to do this, but I feel like it's just gonna trigger me and I'm scared. And is it just me using my past as an excuse? Like. Every time I've tried to run before, it's felt quite secretive. And this time I'm being very open about it, speaking to it with my therapist, sharing my concerns. And she's basically said to me, Laura, I think you're ready. Like the reason it didn't work every other time over the past year or so is because you weren't ready for it. You still had so much to process in your mind that to then now go through this step it was just all too much for you and that's okay, but I've come so far in the last year that I've got like, I've got so much brain space now. <laughs> what used to be taken up by depression is now like clear. So I've got time and space to focus on the running and so far it's going really, really well. I'm enjoying it so much. The only thing I track is distance just because I like to know how far I can run, but that's it and it's just, it's like a hobby and knitting for me was obviously my hobby and it is still kind of my hobby but it's 90% work and I'm okay with that I love that I wouldn't change my job for the world and I've never been able to say that about a job I love it it's the most perfect job for me physically mentally lifestyle it's just amazing but I still need a hobby in my life and yes there are pleasure knits but it's not the same anymore. So me and my therapist are like, we're going to look at running as a hobby. It's not a weight loss tool. I'm not doing it because I think it's what I'm supposed to do to be healthy. It's a hobby. That's how we look at it. We do our hobbies purely for the joy of it. Hobbies are like just completely 
completely for us, for no one else. And yes, we might make things for other people. And yes, we might get an object at the end of it. But the hobby is the joy of doing the thing for no other reason than that we love it. So that is how we are now looking at running. It is my hobby. And I'm really excited and I really want to go for a run. But it's now officially raining. Anyway, so this is getting chatty. Thank you for the comments on yesterday's. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I definitely exported it and had that, oh God, this is going to be really boring worry, but we just missed that and put it aside. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed watching it. And last night whilst I was editing, I put some more squares into my blue motif. I'm gonna hold it up this way around, even though it's like the bottom. The bottom three have been added in, three done in one day. That's pretty good going for me. On a day where I've got nothing else to do but knit, I can get four done. But yes, there was quite a busy day. So those bottom three are coming on and you can see how this is kind of working out now. I'm having so much fun. The blues are so lovely. I'm not a blue person at all. So it's nice to kind of use these yarns and experience these yarns and have fun with this color without, you know, thinking, am I gonna like this? Am I gonna wear it? That joint's looking a bit janky, isn't it? What have I done there? Oh, I've just not sewn the ending very well. <laughs> so yes, that's where we're at with this and I'm gonna do some more on this today. And then I think after this blue one, I think I'm gonna cast on my orange or my purple, just cause I wanna get one of these single color ones on the go. One of these, which one do you think? Please tell me and I'll like tally up the comments, orange or purple. <laughs> So that's where we're at. That's what's going on this Thursday. I now need to crack on my ear, my AirPods ran out of juice and I cannot do any kind of cleaning or tidying or sorting without something going on in my ears. That has been an amazing life change in the past year. Like I used to like do the cleaning and tidying like completely raw, completely dry. <laughs> and I used to think that like I'd, it wouldn't even cross my mind that having something like a book or a video whilst doing those things was a good idea. Like, of course, well, not everyone finds cleaning boring, but I do. It sucks the life out of me. I hate it. Um, but when I'm listening to an audiobook, I can trick my mind and my body goes into autopilot and my, and my mind is happy. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm going to crack on and I know it's gonna feel really, 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 really good. It's 20 past 11. So I reckon by half past 12, so in an hour and a bit, I will be sat down with my lunch and some knitting. Mm. We ain't women today, are we? Anyway, let's crack on with the day. Oh, it's even more significant at Easter. Crack on with the day, get it? Crack on, like cracking an egg. Oh, I need to make, I need to make crack on with the day lunch. <laughs> This one road to take, it's growing. This is the epitome of day three hair. <laughs> so, I did not hit my target of sitting down and eating lunch with an tidy house at half past 12 because I spent 20 minutes scrolling on my phone without even realizing. So, it's now nearly one o'clock and I've done huge amounts. I've done loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. The house isn't 100% there, but there's a lot of things that I either want to do later on or I'll do tomorrow. There's bits like the table that is absolutely covered in Penny's art supplies. I'm not doing because, oh, sorry, I kicked you. Because Penny is going to help do it when she gets home from my mum's today. And Jeff's room, that will be him. He will need to tidy that. I'm trying really hard to kind of establish like uh, helping cleaning, tidying with the kids now. They're definitely old enough and they're much better at tidying up now than they used to be. It used to be such a battle, but they're definitely better now. And I think that comes with school as well. And just general maturity. But we're pretty much there. Everything's feeling pretty, pretty nice. And just a few more tasks to do. It stopped raining, but the weather's still looking pretty grim. 
So I still don't know if I'm going to go for a run. What, what is this? Okay, they, that's just ridiculous. We just sort this out completely. Oh my goodness. I'm also thinking if I go for a run tomorrow morning rather than now, then tomorrow morning will be hair wash day rather than today. So we will have fresh hair for the party. There we go. That, that's going to have to do. I thought I would show you my Easter bits. So the kids, in, so in our house, hopefully, normally, the Easter Bunny will leave a little something for the children for when they wake up. Usually an Easter egg and like a little cuddly toy. Last year it was a carrot, which was a cuddly carrot, just little. My kids love soft toys, stuffed toys. My son particularly like has got a collection. He sleeps with all of them and he, he loves them. He loves them with his heart. Penny also loves them, but she's quite fickle. She'll have a different favorite every day. But they do love a cuddly toy. So maybe the Easter Bunny will bring an egg and a toy. And then I do the Easter egg hunt. We've, when they were younger, the Easter Bunny used to do the Easter egg hunt, but logistically that's just gotten harder to do. And the Easter egg hunt was such a huge part of my childhood, even like into my teens and early twenties at times, it was all about the Easter egg hunt. That was the exciting thing because my dad was just so unbelievably good at the Easter egg hunt. We'd do a lot of small eggs and a couple of big eggs and it would normally be outside. And even though we had a small garden every year, he'd find somewhere new to hide the eggs. <laughs> and yeah, I just love it. So I, like it has to be done. And I thought I'd show you what I have got for the Easter egg hunt. I put a mixture of edible treats and non-edible treats. And this year I've managed to go plastic free, which I'm really pleased about. I'm always tempted to buy those little plastic eggs. And you know, if that's what you got available to you, then great. But I've managed to find some really good alternatives that I'm going to keep for next year as well. So, picked this up from Sainsbury's. So they're just like foil covered eggs, but in a, in a box. It also comes with like, signs i think but i probably won't use those so i'm gonna have a couple of these for the kids easter egg hunt and i'll pop a couple of these like as decoration for the party tomorrow like on the food in, in amongst the food just for some like colorful edible decor and then they've each, they've each got a big kinder egg because they love i love kinder so they've got like one of those and these Oh no, did I smash them? No, we're okay. Some little foil covered chocolate bunnies. And then all these eggs, I've got some paper eggs and some metal eggs. They all came from Sostrena Grena, which is a Danish homeware shop that's just hit the UK. And we've got one local to us and it's fantastic. They have yarn, they have craft supplies, they have everything. It's like Ikea and Flying Tiger had a baby with taste. <laughs> Everything is beautiful and everything is super affordable. I love it. So they've each got a big egg each. And aren't they just like so beautiful? This one's Penny's, this one's Jess. He, they're not fussed about what the eggs look like. They're just fussed about what's inside. And what I'll do is I'll put a P on one and a J on the other. And I did that last year. I can't find the, the stuff I bought last year. I think I might have gotten rid of it, but um, I'll write a P and a J on the things that are theirs. So there is no fighting. And the rules of our Easter egg, egg hunt is that everything that gets found gets put on the table and divided at the end equally. It's not about you keep what you find because Jeff is always going to find more than P because he's quicker and taller. <laughs> so it's all put it in the middle and then we share and then I put their names on the things that are theirs. So in these big eggs, we have, they've both got this, oh, this is Penny's one. So they've got a set of socks. So Penny's got bluey socks and a couple of chocolate eggs and a, a car, a Hot Wheels car, but it's the Mario Kart cars. They've got four of these cars already and they play with them all the time. They play with them together. They love them. And the other day, Jeff was like, oh, I wish we had y uh, Yoshi and what's the other one? Bowser. So I was like, mm -hmm. got on Amazon quickly quick and found them. So this is Penny's. I won't open Jeff's, but he's got some Minecraft socks and he's got Bowser. So those are some like non-food based, just 
very small little treats, things that I know that they will love and things that will get used. I'm very big on gifts for the kids that are practical. I do this at Christmas as well. Like it's not just about toys and stuff. I like to give things that they're excited for, but practical. So they both needed some new socks. They've got like merch, the, the, the characters that they love. So they'll be excited about those. And it's uh, something that is not just gonna get thrown away or never used. And then we've got the medium eggs. And in here we have, I can't even remember. Oh, on one side we've got a surprise bag. This is like a Disney figure surprise bag. So they don't know what's in there. And a Melody Pop. Does anybody remember these? These were like my childhood. I loved these. It's like a little whistle. And you pull and you blow, blow into it and you pull the bottom out. And it's like slides and makes a noise. They're going to blooming love these. They're absolutely going to love them. So I thought they were really cool. And they've got the same. And then my last tiny little egg is, it's got, it's just got some marshmallows in it, some like Easter themed marshmallows because I couldn't find anything tiny enough to go in here that wasn't edible. And I think that's, I think that's, that's nice. So there we go. And I, like my, my family will get the kids a little something. I know my mum's done them a little kind of Easter gift of like crafty Easter gifty things, which is lovely. And, They'll get an egg from their grandparents. So I tend, I tend not to go like too big. I feel like that's a nice amount. There's gonna be lots of things for them to find because that's half the fun finding. But then the actual things themselves are nice. And then all this Easter chocolate and sweets and stuff will last us ages. <laughs> He is kind of like give or take chocolate. I double checked with her because some chocolate she doesn't like. I said, do you like Easter egg chocolate, baby? She was like, yes, yes, I do. So yeah. And then I've got a couple of bits here that for the party tomorrow, which I thought I'd show you because they're really, really fun. Again, Sostrena Grena. I got two of these. So they're like little plaster of Paris Easter things. And they come with paints, but we've also got loads of paints. And I've got two packs of these. So. This should be enough for the little kids to do a couple of those the bigger kids aren't as bothered by that when the bigger kids come around they're more excited about playing on uncle ben's um video game consoles <laughs> um, and then i also got some just easter themed stickers as well so there'll be paper and pens and they can do like little easter pictures if they want and then i think my favorite easter purchase i got from sainsbury's carrot shaped bath fizzers <laughs> I don't know if they're particularly meant to be Eastery, but aren't they awesome? And there's six in that pack and there are five kids. So as part of the hiding of all the little chicks and things, I'm gonna hide the carrots as well. So each kid will go home with a bath bomb, <laughs> which I thought would be really, really fun. I'd love to know if you guys have any Easter traditions, what it's like, where you're from. Do you do the Easter egg hunt? I can't imagine Easter without an Easter egg hunt. It's like the best bit. <laughs> um, and yeah, what do you guys, what have you guys got planned for the Easter weekend? In the UK, we get double bank holiday. So everybody has Friday and Monday off work, which is wonderful. Although obviously Mr. P has not been in work for the past like two weeks. So he was in America for one of those weeks. So um, it will be lovely to have him home and hopefully he'll spend a bit more time getting better. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I'm feeling really good about it. Right, so I think I am gonna do it. I'm gonna go for the run. I'm gonna put my muddy trainers on. I've got waterproof, like cross country running trainers. And I'm gonna put a jumper on to keep warm, put my cap on, so if it does rain, I'm okay. And I'm just gonna do it. And I think I might, leave the hair wash until tomorrow anyway because i mean i'm not going anywhere after my run so it doesn't really matter what my hair looks like so it can be messy and because it's cold i won't get sweaty so we'll be all right so yeah i think i'm going to go for my run now and then when i'm home for my run it will be lunch time and then when i am all like dry and fed i'll hopefully have about an hour or so to do some crafting before the kids get home so there we go. Let's do it. Let's let's brave it. Oh, I
half an hour and I am feeling good. <laughs> Even though that was possibly the wettest, most miserable run I've ever done. And I'm not saying miserable as in like I was miserable. I was actually loving it. Just the weather was miserable. When I left the house, it was a little bit drizzly, but I thought we'll be all right. But honestly, within a few minutes, it was like proper raining, fully, fully raining. At one point it was like sideways raining. And the, like the longer that I went for, <laughs> I was wearing like a jumper, like a oversized black jumper. And it, that jumper was just getting heavier and heavier as it was soaking up all the rain. <laughs> so like my arms hurt. Like it was like I had, was like, had weights on my arms and on my body and I can really feel it. Um, but yeah, I did my run and even though I got very, very wet, I, felt, I feel really good. I'm so glad that I went. Hopefully I won't get a cold. I didn't get cold kept my jumper on um, and I had my hat on so like hopefully I won't catch a cold from it is that actually a thing like we say oh if you go out and you get cold and wet you'll catch a cold but a cold is a virus right like surely the, the virus you catch like from another person you catch the bacteria so just being wet and cold does that increase the chances like is that true is that real? I don't think that's real. We'll see in a couple of days time if I'm like, oh, I'm cold. <laughs> so I'm re really, really glad I went for my run. I listened to um, Olivia Rodrigo, my one of my new favorite things to listen to. I do always feel a little bit like I'm cheating on Sabrina Carpenter when I do, but a little bit she's like she's like a teenager well she's like 21 now but her first album she was like 19 and it's so like angsty and poppy and it's the album I wish I had written at that age it's like about heartbreak and being jealous and like it's brilliant I love it and it's got this kind of like 90s noughties vibe to it which was like especially like in the noughties in the 2010s was like when I was like a teen, late teen, and like going through all those angsty things. <laughs> um, I just love it. I find it really, really motivating. For a long time, I couldn't listen to music. It was like a mental health thing. I'm not gonna go into the deets of that, but I just couldn't listen to music for a long time. And when I would run or exercise, I would listen to podcasts or self-help, but what, often, what would often happen is my mind would then spiral in. I would do some good thinking, at times better when I was walking but it just I wasn't like connecting with the running my mind was doing stuff whereas now listening to music I feel more connected with the running and I can feel it in my body and it feels good and it's like my mind has a break from all the thinking because I'm always thinking like constantly it doesn't switch off ever that's not a normal thing apparently <laughs> okay no that's the wrong word it's normal for me and it's normal for lots of other people but not everybody has a mind that um is constantly talking to you <laughs> so it's a nice break from that and yeah it felt really 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 good i haven't looked at my pace i've i got this my husband got me this watch for my birthday and i don't really know how to use it <laughs> um how do I do that? How do I see my past things? Yeah, never mind. Um, I don't know what my pace was, but it felt fast because I just wanted to get home. <laughs> so yeah, it was really, really good. I'm so glad I did it. I My hair survived quite well. If anything, the rain was like doing a little refresh. Haven't washed it, haven't dried it. I'm just gonna leave it like this now. And then tomorrow morning, I can do myself a nice, full curly girl routine if you would like to know what i do then let me know in the comments i know it's quite a niche thing but when i shared that i was doing a curly hair journey on my podcast like i was really surprised at the amount of people that like responded to that and thank you to everyone who said some nice things about my hair on the last vlog it was like very kind of you um so yeah if you want to know what i do currently i'll share that tomorrow so let me know in the comments 
But yeah, we're just leaving it as it is for now. And that's fine because we're not going anywhere. I'm in my comfortable beige uniform, my happy place. I've got some knitting next to me that I'm going to show you. And yeah, I'm so ready to get cozy and the kids will get home and we can have a cuddle and yeah, I'm ready. I'm just going to have a sip of my coffee, decaf, because I'm in my 30s had the nicest lunch. I was so hungry. I had one of those busy mornings where I had like eaten bits and pieces there. Like I almost always have a banana in the morning. It's just like, it's just a thing I do. I have a coffee and I'll have a banana. Normally because like I'm awake and I'm hungry, but I don't have time to sit and eat a full breakfast, like doing school run, running errands and stuff. So I'll like grab a banana. And then when I'm back from the school run, back from my errands, I'll like have breakfast or brunch, depending. So I like had a banana and I had a few nibbly bits here and there, but I hadn't, hello? Had to say goodbye to the builder. Finish the drive, it's all done. Got a little fence in and our front door is coming next week. I'm so excited. It's been two and a half years and the whole house has been redone, but we've had the same old yucky front door. So it's like the final piece of the puzzle. Yay. So. I am going to show you what I'm going to be knitting on for the rest of the day and then I think I'm going to officially sign off. I'm just looking forward to getting cozy and hanging out with the kids and making tea and just, yeah, but I'll take you with me for that, of course. So I'm going to show you a little project that I've just been kind of picking up, putting down, just working on it when I feel like it. And that's been quite nice. I think it's because it's like an out of season thing if i do write a pattern for it or release it then it's not going to be till like end of the year so i thought i'd show you this i've shown this on the podcast but i've made quite a bit of progress since i last showed it oh my goodness i'm halfway through a row why did i stop halfway through a row that's going to make it really difficult to show you <laughs> i've been working on a uh like you feel very far away <laughs> on a um, shawly, scarfy type vibe. Is it a shawl? Is it a scarf? Don't really know, but here we have one side. It's an elongated kite within Taja. Hopefully you recognize this from the podcast. And I have now gone on to my next two colors. Oh, look at that. Isn't it satisfying? Oh my goodness. I'm so happy with it. It looks so beautiful. These three colours were gifted to me from a friend. Um, it's the Clinton Hill Bespoke DK Cashmere. So it's, it's stunning. And this is the Cardiff Cashmere Classic Held Double. This does create a thicker fabric than these three, but I don't really mind. Like the sizing is fine in the grand scheme, it doesn't really matter. And it meant that I could use all of all these three colors. And that's why I started designing this because I wanted to be able to use every single or as much as possible of every ball of these yarns, but I didn't want to do anything stripey or anything like that. So I weighed them all, figured out which was the lightest, so had the least meterage, which was this one, and started with that one because I knew that if I can do this much with this ball, I can definitely do that with the other two because these have more meterage than this one. And yeah, now I'm just decreasing down again and it's going to be so simple. It's 50 grams of each colour, this version, and I'm hoping it's going to get a really nice kind of like wrap around once and tuck in kind of size scarf. And isn't it lovely? So nice, I'm so pleased with it. So yeah, I'm just picking this up and putting it down. It's not the most um, mindless knit because you've got the entire bit in the middle, but it's extremely satisfying. And other than that little change, it's really, really easy. And yeah, really, really fun. I have had an idea to potentially do some matching mittens and make it a set, just like one pattern of the scarf and the set. And I'd also like to do it again, but with more yarn this time, maybe a hundred grams and see like how big it gets. Or I might make the mittens, see how much yarn I've got left and see if I can get like the scarf and the mittens out of hundred 
skein, 100 gram skeins of either fingering weight yarn, how double, or DK on its own. So it's one of those, like you go through your stash, you've got all those like random one, random single, single balls and you can like put them together or you have like one or two balls left over from a jumper or something and you just put like four nice colors together and you get a set. How fun would that be? Oh, but we'll see. Uh, there's no plans to be working on it anytime soon. It's just my pleasure project. Oh my goodness. The wind just blew over my uh, parasol eek. Although it's kind of like leaning against the wall now. So that's probably kind of, oh no, it's coming down. Oh my goodness, good. I'm glad I wasn't out in the rain in this. This is, oh my goodness, this is like a storm. This is hardcore. Good job I wasn't out in this. Oh my. But yeah, so that's just kind of like a pick up, put down pleasure project. So I'm going to put some rows into that now whilst I'm waiting for the kids to get back. And then I might do some more on my Stella. We'll see how I feel. But with that, I just want to say thank you for joining me again today. Oh my goodness, can you hear that wind? Our house is a wooden framed house. And because we're up on a hill, um, whenever it's this windy, the whole house creaks. And it can be a little bit unnerving sometimes but it's also quite fun. So yes, thank you for joining me again. I will be seeing you again tomorrow for the family party. That's probably gonna be quite a, not a chaotic day for me. I should be able to chat in the morning and chat after the party. I'm gonna take snippets of the party, but I won't be filming my family. And I also don't wanna take myself like away from the party. So I'll do little bits here and there, but just, just that. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to it, getting festive, getting Eastery. It's not supposed to rain tomorrow, so hopefully it'll feel a little bit more spring-like. You know, once upon a time we would have been out on the terrace. There has been a good Friday, I'm sure, where we were sitting on the terrace and it was sunny and lovely, but not this year. So I hope you've all had a lovely Thursday and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining me and see you then. Bye!